I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is February 20th, 2020. And this is a quick video I'm going to do, just the news. Uh, just going over a couple of things. One, on a personal note, I have all my backyard games done. So I am ready for a birthday party. So got them all working. Life is good. And on an interesting note, um, since these are, a lot of these layers are just one layer thick, there's some interesting things you can do with it. So on here, you can see Uniqua. She has two different levels of pink. There's a lighter pink and a darker pink. Well, this is actually done with the same pink filament. It's just the lighter pink is one layer, and the thicker is two layers. Also, there's some kind of interesting mixing going on because I'm doing thin layers uh, on Austin here. There's this blue bottom, but the middle section here is actually supposed to be yellow. And so when, it, when the yellow went over there, yellow and blue make green, ended up with a green. And if you actually look at that, there's the other green was actually a green, but the middle one was supposed to be yellow. And the fact they layered over each other, they kind of mixed. Now, truth be told, if I went two, three, four layers deep, the, the colors wouldn't matter. They wouldn't bleed together. But since this is so thin, you have that possibility of bleeding things through, which, you know, could be an interesting effect, but something to be aware of. But um, more of a reason why most people are probably watching this video is the Prusa Mini has the new firmware app, 4.0.3. So if you have a Prusa Mini, hopefully you got an email announcing it. Hey, go download it, get it. Um, he wants to make, keep, you know, he wants to make sure everyone has the latest stuff, especially one like this. Uh, and if you don't, you can go over here to Prusa3D.com drivers, scroll down to the Mini, and you'll see the firmware there. You just download it. Uh, also here there'll be release notes, uh, and I'll put over here is the release notes, and I'll put a link in this to my in the video in the show notes. Um, now with that, this video is not going to be a how to install it or go over what the fixes are. I just want to get the news out right now real quickly. Um, but if you need to install it, it should be an easy procedure. I haven't done it yet, but I think this the fact is, I think all you need to do is just download onto the thumb drive, put the thumb drive in, shut the machine off, turn it back on, and the first thing will, it'll notice that there's a new uh, firmware and ask you if you want to install it. I think that's the procedure, but don't quote me on that today. Uh, I'm hoping the next day or two to get a couple of videos done based on this. Right now, both of my machines are behind on their firmware. So I want to do a video showing how to install firmware on the i3 Mark III and the Prusa Mini and do that all in one video. And then I think I'm going to do another video showing the things on this list that I'm interested in that might have changed and see what kind of changes occurred in the 4.0.3. Because as you look at this list, there's a lot of stuff. Um, you know, there's an issue with USB drive that has not been an issue for me because I'm using the same USB drive, little fixes like that. So he can go through one by one and go through the details. Now of all these, the ones I'm concerned with right now personally are the M600. That's the filament change point, which I've had issues with, where sometimes it goes, sometimes it doesn't. There's a reliability issue. They said they fixed it. So if it's reliable now, now hopefully, hopefully it's reliable because now then I can do my multicolored punch like I do and not worry about getting 90% done and then just airing out. Uh, hopefully that's fixed. Also, this first layer calibration tweak sounds like an interesting idea. For those who don't know, um, I'll probably cover this in that video because I'm interested in it, is there's a first, cali first layer calibration setting on there you can go through and it'll help you try to adjust the first layer to adjust to get that right height. And I think if I'm reading this correctly, you know, at the end, if, you're, if you've done this before, it goes back and forth and back and forth. And it sounds like they tweaked it to now to probably just do a, a square and then fill it in which seems more appropriate. So um, we'll see how that goes. I'm interested in that. Uh, the other one I'm interested in is repeatable purge, which is an issue that there are ways to overcome. But right now, if all of a sudden you, you put something in there and for some, you put, you switch out your filament, but if you mess up and you don't get it far enough in, it's, there's, there's no going back. You get like one extra thing to say, Hey, do I need to purge it again? Yeah, purge it again. And that's it. It'll just start up. Um, and if it does start up right now, you can stop it and force some purges, but it really should ask you, Hey, am I done? Do I need to purge some more? And I think they fixed it. I'm really interested in that. Uh, this crash dump feature, I'm interested in it. I don't know if I can simulate it or not, but it looks like now for debugging purpose to help, uh, us out and to help Prusa, to help the Prusa guys help us out. It looks like now if there's an error, uh, some kind of fatal issue, it'll dump to a file in the in the system, and then you can dump that to a file on the USB drive that you can probably hand back to the Prusa guys so they can try to figure out what the heck happened and try to make fixes. Um, other interesting things that I'm not going to test, but I think are interesting, is the heat bed temperature limit. 
I don't do a lot of weird things, and the Prusa Mini is limited compared to other printers. Um, and right now, I just do PLA. That's like 99% of what I do. And maybe PETG. And PETG can, has to, the bed is like 90 degrees C, if I'm remembering correctly. But it looks like uh, there was a problem where it could go higher. So now they're limited to 100 degrees C. So for me, that's a good safety thing because uh, the Prusa Mini, I'm okay with it being limited. If I can do PETG and PLA, that's great for beginners and gives you a lot of room to do a lot of things. Anything hotter or higher, um, I don't even know. I've never done anything over 90 degrees C, so I don't know what materials require anything higher. Uh, but another thing to note, that's not an issue for me, but it's interesting to note. There's some Ethernet issues on there. In the long run, I'm really interested in what I can do with the Ethernet on this, like plugging this in and having it networked and doing something like uh, Octopi or, or something similar that Prusa might come up with where I can control and talk to my printers uh, more interactively but with web pages or something. Um, but what they've done is whatever's going on, and I'm not using it all right now, whatever's going on, they said, hey, for this version, we're just turning Ethernet off. So if Ethernet's have, if you need, you're using Ethernet, don't bother upgrading this one because they are just turning it off so that until they work on it, and I'm sure they'll bring it back in the next version to the version after that. Right now, I'm not using it. So I'm okay with that personally. Um, but I am looking forward to what kind of possibilities that can present because really, I'm hoping, I'm not sure, but I, since we have more CPU power, I'm thinking this might be able to run its own mini web server, and it would be nice uh, to log in locally from my machine, get some kind of rudimentary web interface that's actually directly on that and tell it to print or get some updates. I don't know. I don't know what the possibilities are, so um, I don't even know what Bruce is planning. But that Ethernet thing is, I think, could be really cool in the future. But anyway, quick news, 4.03, download it, update it, uh, or... If you're cautious, which is a good thing to be, um, give it a few days. Wait, you know, I'm going to put a video out. I'll be testing it. Other people will be testing it. Um, but they've been doing tests, so I'm not... Eh, I wouldn't be too worried about updating this. But, hey, if you're cautious, it's always better to be cautious. Give it a few days. Go on the forum. See if anyone else has complained about anything before you update it. But also, if you do update it, you can always roll it back. You should be able to roll it back. Mm. Can you roll it back? I know it's easy enough to roll it back on the Prusa i3 Mark III, but how do you roll it back on the Prusa Mini? I have to think about that. Anyway, um, that's enough news for today. Hey, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we're doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.